Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, working with technology, especially with kids in early childhood. And what I'm looking at is basically preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and talk a little bit about my thinking and my work um, in technology and early childhood ed, and thinking about what could we do and what should we do. Uh, this parallels with a lot of my recent work on screen time and thinking about um, little tiny tykes and how they are using screens in and out of the classroom. So if I think about this, um, I think that literacy and technology are changing and we need to think about ways to empower educators to make this a reality in their classroom, but then also we need to think about um, students. I would say focus on the educators first and then think about the students. But th I also think that, you know, we need to think about doing this at an early age and not thinking that we need to wait until um, later in life. So my thinking about this um, primarily comes from watching my son. Um, now watching my son and daughter and the way they interact with technology, but primarily looking at my son and, and how he interacts with and, and uses tech. And if I think about this, I look at, you know, what he talks about, what, you know, what it's, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? That sort of question. Um, and then I look at the way that, you know, he interacts with these different tools and what he wants to be when he grows up. And, and the truth of the matter is that he wants to be a YouTube star. Um, he might see the way that I use technology a lot in my work, um, but he wants to be a YouTube star. He wants to get out there and create content. And he's had this idea, you know, in, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, um, you know, he has a desire to have a YouTube channel and put content out there regularly. Um, whatever that means is another talk for another day, but he, he has this indication. We watch a lot of YouTube in the house and he's indicated that he wants to be a YouTube star. And I think about, um, you know, I try to understand where this desire comes from. So in the past, you know, and on my YouTube channel, I have this video, uh, it's a stop motion animation clip that I've created in the past with him. You know, he was about three years old when we uh, built this and we put it up online. And when I show it to other people, he is excited that other people are watching this video about stop motion that he created with me when he was three and it's up online and he can show it to anybody. So maybe that's some of the seeds for this desire. But then, you know, I started looking at work that he was doing in first grade and in second grade, and I saw the way that he was using apps in the classroom to communicate with us when we were not there. So one of the apps that he was using is Seesaw, and he has the opportunity to sort of, you know, send us little notes. So he would have video conferencing, you put on a headset and look at the webcam and the mic, and and read to us or you know share his work he could take photos and he was you know creating little pictures and sending us messages and sending us notes of stuff that he was doing during the day and it was really exciting to see this um but it, as a way he's he's producing content he's broadcasting from the classroom to us what he also started to do was and this was really interesting he you know like i said he was able to put on a headset and talk to us and he was able to put on a headset and read to us he was able to you know read books to us and share things that was happening in the classroom so in a way he's he's broadcasting already in the classroom the challenge is he's broadcasting within these apps um, with this one at seesaw in particular but he's basically using these tools already he's ha he's he's utilizing these practices already but he's creating in someone else's world so one of the things that this has me thinking is that, you know, I want my son, I want all children to be able to maintain and document and have their own space. You know, if he's if he's doing these things already in the classroom, why is he doing them, you know, within Seesaw? Why is he doing this work in Seesaw? Why is he sharing it there as opposed to he owns this. So if he creates two or three digital products in kindergarten, 
Why can he not save those and work on them again in first grade or second grade or later on in fourth grade, fifth grade or beyond show those off or remix or redo those pieces? Um, you know, why does this have to live or die in that in that silo back in Seesaw? Um, you know, and, and come to think of it, the the video that I showed that video of him sitting in the classroom is a year or two old now at this point, And the teacher is no longer there and he's no longer there. And yes, Seesaw still exists, but we don't know how long they will be there um, and what's happened to that sort of residue as he's gone and passed on. So one of the things that this makes me think about is, you know, what do these changes mean? Um, what is, you know, are there opportunities to do things a little bit differently? What could and what should we be doing with these, um, you know, different tools and practices and build up something that he can, you know, sort of keep track of and, and use over time? To make this a reality, um, I see a continuum of practices. I see a continuum of things that early childhood teachers could and should be doing um, and then once they build that skill set then we see um, kids in early childhood start to utilize these practices as well so one of the first things that we take a look at is you know what exactly is digital literacy what does it mean to be digitally literate and digital literacy means a lot of different things for a lot of different people um, so one of the first things we have to figure out is what does it mean to be digitally literate? And I think that that has to be the goal if we're going to think about having kids in early childhood use technology. Um, it's not just using the iPad or it's not just, you know, taking a picture with an iPad or just logging into Seesaw and reading to us. But what are the skills and practices? To make sense of what it means to be digitally literate, I focus on first principles theory. First principles basically is a, is a philosophical uh, lens that we use to sort of like whittle things down to their basics, uh, basest elements. And the thinking is that if we whittle this thing all the way down to the most basic component parts, then we don't have to worry about all of the different uh, permutations of that. So if we focus on the basic elements, then the other things will sort of make sense and work their way through. So when I think about what it means to be digitally literate, I view this continuum of practices as being consumption, curation, and creation. And you'll see a lot of this in my other areas on my channel, um, but I, I, I view this digital literacy or, or literacy in tech or, or you know, being um, able to use these digital texts and tools as consumption, curation, and creation. If we can master those, if we can build those up, um, the tools and practices will change over time. But um, the focus is on building these skill sets so that whatever tools, whatever purpose, whatever um, your outcome or your objectives are, you can still say that you are digitally literate. So consumption, the good news is that we already consume a lot of content, especially kids. Um, you know, children are consuming about seven and a half to eight and a half hours of content in variety of streams. Um, for a variety of purposes so that we're actively consuming content regularly. The question that we have to ask ourselves, and we should ask this of children and also adults, is how well do we critically examine information that we're reading online? How, do, how well do we critically examine um, what we're reading instead of just actively consuming all the time? Are we trying to make sense of it and, and critique what we're, we're reviewing? And we need to build that skill set. Then I the, the next stage of this progression I see is being curation, actively selecting and choosing what's the best of the information. The, the truth of the matter is when we get online and we consume content, there is a fire hose of information. There is a, uh, many times we're overwhelmed with the amount of content and the amount of information that's coming at us. So the challenge here is like how best to handle that, that deluge of information that's coming at us. So in terms of content curation, I view there being a need to develop and harness a culture of experts. Um, you know, each one of us is an expert in a variety of different capacities. And so, you know, why not identify what that expertise is in and sort of create a space online where you can help other people see what's the good and the bad. You know, so if you're an expert in fine Italian handbags or CrossFit activities or, you know, uh, pedagogical uses of technology, 
how can you help other people see and utilize that expertise? So you say, okay, well, I'm an expert in, you know, fine Italian handbags and these, this area over here, these links over here, that's the good stuff and all this other stuff over here isn't that important. You don't really need to worry about it. So create that space where you can share that expertise online. One of the things that I do is I do a weekly newsletter. So throughout the week I read a lot online and I share some of that and I write about a lot of different things and I create video content. Um, and what I do is I basically take time once a week to push pause and say, okay, well, here's the good stuff that I need to worry about and share and you need to think about. And I put it into a weekly newsletter to think about technology and the important stuff that's out there. The last stage of the continuum I view as being creation. And that's actively sitting down and constructing or remixing and sharing content. And the truth of the matter is that the internet and, and these digital spaces allow us the potential to create and share a lot of really cool things. But the, the trouble is, for better or worse, you know, what's the stuff that really sticks? What's the stuff that engages people and they're interested in, in learning more about? Um, you know, is it funny cat videos? Um, is it Star Wars stuff? Is it something in between? So what's the stuff that people really are interested in and, and want to pay attention to? Once again, uh, the continuum that I'm making, I'm trying to sketch out here is this one of moving from consumption to curation to creation. It's thinking through each of these stages, each of these different practices, um, and thinking about how we can use technology for these purposes. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done and more discussion, but it's basically a, a first step to think through these. So the, the question I want to end on is, um, I think that's where our, our students or our children, especially in early childhood, that's where I think they need to be. Um, and then we have questions about, well, how do we get them there? You know, well, first off, is that where we want them to be? Um, I, in other areas on my channel and in my writings, I ask questions about, do we want our kids to be digitally literate? Do we want them to have and utilize these social practices? We see some of the challenges with social media. Do we want our kids to be involved in that or that? to be their future. That is up for discussion. Um, but if that is where we want them to be, how, what do we need to do in early childhood specifically to get them there? By the time we get to late elementary, by the time we get to elementary, in most cases, middle and high school, it might be too late. Um, we need to start thinking about what's happening at home and then also what's happening in early childhood and figure out, okay, what are the next steps? What do we need to do? So thank you for watching. Hopefully that inspired you to think through some of these concepts. Um, if you're interested in any of this, by all means, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be sharing a lot more content more regularly. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you have some questions about this or other things you'd like to learn more about, please leave a note or a comment down below. Thanks a ton.